play with me now? So meet leading trainer John Ortiz. Um, you have both Boss Lady Bailey and Just the Warrior nominated for the Ellis Park Run Happy debutante next week. Have you decided who's going to run at this point? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely pointing uh, Just the Warrior for it for sure. Um, you know, I want to figure out how to separate the two fillies. Uh, but, you know, if I have to run both of them, I will. But right now, I think we're going to be focusing on Just, uh, uh, just the Warrior. She went by five her last race. Talk about the race that day. You know, um, it was very, I mean, she wasn't disappointing. It was very expected of, of her to perform that way. I thought the barn and I were very high on her. Just physically looking at her, we've always thought that she's going to be a great horse. Um, so we're happy with that effort. Um, you know, it was more like a workout for her. You know, obviously she, she just finished working this morning and she did the same thing, set three off and then goes by, you know, opens up by two. Uh, she just likes passing, you know, she likes uh, the game. She enjoys what she's doing. And if you would run bo uh, both, what about Boss Lady Bailey? She had a little tougher time in her maiden debut win. Uh, I think it was like a neck. Uh, it, yeah, it, well, I don't say it was a tough, I think I think she was, uh, we were trying to shoot, um, we're giving her an opportunity to see how really good she is. I mean, the seven furlong distance for any horse, uh, first asking is very difficult and she wasn't, uh, as I had, her, I didn't have her at 100%. Uh, she just looked like a filly that would want to do the distance, and she's been training fantastic in the morning. And we were probably at least good two or three workouts short. But I rather, I wanted to do it now and get that experience out of the way. Timing wise, I think it'll benefit us down the down the road. What might you be looking at for um, Boss Lady Bailey if you don't run in the debutante? Would you wait for the? Um Pocahontas and Mama's Well, thinking. yeah, we got the Pocahontas, obviously. You got a race in Saratoga, I think, on, the, on closing day, too. I mean, I think that's something we could uh, look at. Um, but you know what? She's she's just a filly that's still not mature, and that's why I said, I told the, the uh, hoodie, and um, I think it's time to rip the bandage off and let's see what we have. And that's just what we did. Just took a shot and, and got her. I think you get way more fit um, off of a race than just – morning drills every you know for the next month so we're ahead of the game right now with her it's just a matter of giving her some time and seeing where she wants to start next well getting back to just the warrior what do you see in her that gets you excited about the the future and how much are you thinking the first friday in may oh yeah we're already obviously that's every day you're going to wake up and think about like something like that uh when you have a nice impressive filly but you know you look at her physically she looks great she's very well balanced uh uh, what I love about her is she, she also has an attitude to go with it, and I love a filly with attitude. You know, they just, you know, they're just hungry. They want, they want, they're here to play the game. They want to be the alpha out there. So she's got that attitude. And you've got Grayson's Macho Gal going in the groupie doll. Yes. Uh, talk about how she's doing. She's doing phenomenal. I mean, Felipe uh, has it down at Churchill. He's uh, doing a really good job with her, and. Um, you know, I think that she's just going to, she ran a tremendous first uh, effort off the, uh, the layup, you know, just getting beat the nose at the wire. So Ray Lou uh, is going to get them called back and he knows her a little bit more now. And, you know, like I said, she, she loves Ellis Park. I think that's the horse for the course. So I hope she does win it because she does, all her wins come off of running here. So I hope uh, we get the groupie doll with her. And John, you know, it's a beautiful day here at Ellis Park, but you know, your wife's family, there's um, a lot of hardship in there right now. From the, They live in eastern Kentucky, the floods, your sister-in-law, Kayla, brother-in-law, Jason, both live down there. Uh, I, you know, what are you hearing about that and telling about that whole situation? Yeah, you know, wedding? it's a little bit uh, sad to hear that kind of news. And, and you know, it's, it's um, I was talking to Ray Lou the other day. It's like, you under, gotta understand that this is, we, we gotta stay humble, you know. On one side of the other side of the the, of the state, here at Ellis, you know, we're living their best meet that we've had. We're winning races, doing well. Uh, get to go home to our house and homes and apartments and to our stuff. And on the other side of uh, the, the state, you know, we have families, not just my family, but a lot of families have lost everything that they've worked so hard for. And, you know, out in Eastern Kentucky, you know, I know the family uh, my my in-laws there, you know, they're from Be Bertha County, and it's, you know, it's a small community. And to lose just one little bit, it could be a, a lot for them. So very humbling right now to 
be able to help them. Uh, you know, we started a GoFundMe page for them. It's on, on my Twitter account. Um, and we've raised a, like a good amount of money for them. And this anything helps, you know. Um, I've donated to charities as well for other people down at, uh, not just to my own uh, in-laws. But uh, I think everybody out Eastern Kentucky needs a little hand right now and donating some water and uh, whatever we can. Uh, and my, my wife went out there the other day helping clean up and said it just took a long time just scraping buckets and buckets of mud out of their cabinets. You know, that's how high the water was. So we're, we're praying for them and we're wishing them well. And, and you know, hopefully this we can just get over this quickly. Having had in-laws that um, lost their homes in Katrina, in New Orleans, the flooding is one of the worst things. The water stays in there, and it just—it's just devastating because you got you're gonna get mold, and you know you ruin stuff, foundations, and houses. There's just so much that can go wrong. But uh, again, you know we're we're happy to help, uh, and we you know it's just a very humbling uh, a time right now where you understand that when we're doing well, we still can share that and help others. And I know again from Katrina, you know the money is appreciated, stuff like bottled water is appreciated. But also knowing that other people care, including people they might not even know. Absolutely, no. And my in laws have been completely happy with the that the racetrack community had definitely helped them. And people that they don't know, you know, they're not affiliated with the horse racing at all. Uh, they're just happy to see us, you know, train horses and and see the success that we have on and off here. But uh, to see complete strangers uh, give them a little bit of a helping hand, uh, they're they're feeling incredibly humbled right now too.